Okay, hey guys, what's up? Uh, so before we get started with this video, I'd like to give a few disclaimers. Uh, number one, I'm not an artist or animator by profession or schooling. I did not go to school for art or animation. My field is not in art. I have only been doing animation as a hobby on YouTube for 12 years. So that's the first disclaimer. Secondly, um, I will not be discussing the animator situation in the animation industry going on right now. For those that don't know, a lot of animators are being let go in the industry. They're being fired. There's a lot of layoffs going on. Something to do with them over hiring them during the streaming golden era or something like that. Um, also, the economy is in kind of recession. It's kind of, we're kind of in a downturn right now. So that's probably also has something to do with it. So what this video will talk about is my personal opinions of why YouTube animators quit, given my own experience animated on YouTube for over a decade. You know, lastly, this is not going to be a positive video that already, you know, wasn't obvious by the title. This is a video on why people just pretty much give up on their YouTube animation journey. So yeah. So what inspired this video? I was going through my subscriptions um, and I noticed I had like hundreds and hundreds of them that I didn't even watch. So I was going through them kind of trying to figure out which ones I could unsubscribe from to get rid of some of the things in my feed that I wasn't interested in. And of course, you know, a lot of the people I'm subscribed to are other animators. So I was clicking on these animators profiles and what I started to notice was a lot of these people, their last upload on YouTube was like 10, 11, 13, 14 years ago, right? Like a lot of these people I subscribed to a long time ago had virtually quit YouTube. And, you know, I started to wonder why that was. So I kind of thought about my experience being an animator on YouTube and why I kind of soft quit animation. And I decided that it was kind of such a frustrating experience for me that I wanted to make a video about it. Number one reason I have up here, low viewership. So when you're an animator, you're spending hours and hours in a day working on frame by frame scenes. You're trying to make stuff look a certain way. You're trying to make it look nice and pretty and all that other stuff. What I found out about YouTube, and I found this out kind of late, you either have to make high quality content or you have to make something popular. Those are really the only two ways you can get high views on YouTube. And for a good chunk of my YouTube career, I didn't really understand how vital these two things were. And I also I didn't really want to make popular stuff. My perception of YouTube as, at the time was that you could just make original content and as long as it's unique and it has kind of a story to it, you would be able to get a lot of followers and views because, you know, that's kind of what it seemed like. And I remember a long time ago, I decided to make a Foxy animation video, you know, Foxy from FNAF, just to kind of see how many views it would get compared to all my other stuff. And I remember within like a month or two, that very simple kind of crappy Foxy quote unquote animation video became, I think, number one or number two on my entire channel. It was very, very well received. Despite it not being well animated, despite it not taking me nearly as long as any of my other content, it got way more views. And that actually made me kind of upset about the whole thing because it kind of confirmed what I had been suspecting, which is that people just watch stuff that's popular. And that's why I wasn't getting as many views as I wanted. I didn't want to make fan content. I wanted to be able to get a lot of views for original content that I came up with, things that I thought were cool, this mindset that if I thought it was cool, everybody else would think it was cool too. And so I guess in that sense, I kind of feel like I was lied to a bit about what it took to be successful as an animator on YouTube. Another point I have is, is low subscriber count. You know, a lot of people become animators on YouTube because they see that they have an example of someone that's already on YouTube that already has a huge subscriber base, lots of supporters. They're probably making a decent chunk of money from their views and they want to do the exact same thing. You know, let's be honest here. A lot of people, the reason they want to start series and do all this stuff is because they want the fame. They want the money. They want people to look up to them. That's why I started out on YouTube is <laughs> because I wanted all of those things. I wanted people to like my stories. Um, I wanted to be able to monetize my content, but I don't think I really understood what it took to get to that 
point where you have all those subscribers and you have all those people that like your stuff. Like I mentioned before, only those who make content about popular things get popular on YouTube. That's a hyperbole, of course, but for most people it's true, especially for animators. Uh, what I started realizing about a lot of animators is uh, I got curious. I got curious why a lot of the, my favorite animators were so big and I scrolled down to a few of their channels and looked at some of their old content and when I looked at their old content, I noticed that a lot of them started off as fan content channels making warrior cat content, MLP, all that other stuff. You know, they started off as fan channels and that's where they got a lot of their initial subscriber base from. And then they transitioned over into semi uh, original content, really just AU type stuff like alternate universe. <laughs> stuff like that you know and that's when I kind of started to realize a lot of these big content creators in the animation space and you know really in the animal animator space they're big because they made a lot of fan content and that's how people were able to find them it's very disheartening for someone that has absolutely no interest in making fan content. I made the FNAF Freddy thing a while ago because I was kind of running the same experiment to see how many views that would get on my channel and that didn't do as well. Um, I think maybe because it wasn't edited as well so maybe that's why but that did take me more time than the Foxy video I made years and years ago. So it just goes to show you as an animator it doesn't really matter how much time you put into something if people aren't searching for it and they don't want to see it, they don't know what it is, they're just not going to click on it. But anyway, low subscriber count is another reason why animators quit. And what I had to realize is that when you're an animator on YouTube, no one cares about your content, even if you spent hours on it. This is what I used to do. I used to spend hours and hours and hours on animations for YouTube, you know, map parts, stuff like that, little personal projects and stuff like the Rabinoco AMV I made a while ago, things like that. I'd spend hours, days, weeks on them and they wouldn't even get a thousand views. And after you do that a few times, you kind of start to realize that people don't really care about what you make. And so you stop having the motivation to make it because what's the point if no one's going to see it really? So what I learned about that experience is that people are very picky what content um, they click on and they're even more picky about who they subscribe to because even if you have, you know, a lot of views on a video, it doesn't mean that most of those people are going to subscribe to you, even if they liked your content, which is insane. Your content has to be either very engaging and well done, and you have to remind people to subscribe. If you ever wonder why you see all these content creators reminding people to subscribe on their videos, it's because, you know, people don't remember to do it or they don't care enough to do it. You know, and this is also kind of surprising to me because I always thought that if people liked your content, they would just automatically subscribe. This is not the case. This is not the case. So I watch a lot of YouTubers, right? And uh, many of them, you know, they say that the majority of their viewers actually aren't subscribed. It'll be like some crazy number over 90%, over 80%, over 70% of you guys aren't subscribed. Please subscribe. Please subscribe, right? And then I looked at my statistics and I was like, well, <laughs> if they're that big of a channel and they have those type of statistics, mine must be abysmal. And sure enough, I looked at my statistics for my channel. And it's the exact same for me. So looked at some of the stats for uh, the last period that YouTube recorded my channel statistics. Out of 213 new views last month, according to YouTube, only nine people subscribed. And honestly, that number is inflated because I know for a fact that most of those people were the people I casted for roles in the Heroes of Mosai. So most of those people are. Um, people in my cast, which thank you for the uh, those of you that subscribed to me. I appreciate it, but I think I know pretty much all nine viewers that subscribed to me, meaning I didn't get any subscribers based off of my content alone, which again, it's like you spend hours and hours on this stuff trying to make cool things for people, trying to make engaging stuff just to not really get anything for it. You know, that's over 95% of people that uh, did not subscribe, even though they watched my content. So what does that say? You know, with that said, 
please subscribe, you know, follow me on Twitter, Chamumisu, uh, check out my Kofi. All those links will be in the description. Trying to get to a thousand subscribers. I have a series, The Heroes of Mosai. I'm casting for it. It's going to be released on this channel in the coming years. It used to be under a different name. It used to be called The End of Eternity. I've changed the name and I'm kind of, I'm trying to get serious about it now. So that's why I'm casting. That's why I'm trying to find people. I just graduated from college. And so on top of work, this is something that I also want to pursue. All right. Uh, with that said, the next reason why animators quit, they can't monetize. They can't monetize their content. So if you don't know, when it comes to YouTube, you get roughly a dollar for every thousand views. I've heard that said a million times, a dollar for every thousand views. I've only watched like one video that's told me otherwise, that it's like three dollars or whatever. Um, if you make, I think if you make a certain type of content that's more monetizable or, or whatever. And uh, I, I don't really believe that number. I think it's more closer to a dollar for every thousand views. So let's say you're a small content creator, small animator, right? You only have maybe one or 2,000 subscribers. At best, you're probably going to get 500 views on your average video. So you spent, you know, probably weeks on an animation video just to make 50 cents. I mean, seriously, I know people in the art community, uh, a lot of people, that they don't like talking about money when it comes to these types of things, because it's a passion, it's a hobby, uh, it's a this, it's a that. But at the end of the day, um, if you're trying to be a full-time artist and animator, and you're trying to make it online, trying to gain a following, I mean, that's not really sustainable. 50 cents nowadays won't even buy you a Snickers bar. It's just not a sustainable thing. And I know YouTube isn't supposed to be your main source of income. Obviously, I know that. Again, I'm not in the art and animation field or anything like that. But just the amount of time versus the amount of money you're getting, 12 hours for 50 cents. I mean, you can see why some people, they just give up and they don't want to do YouTube. They don't want to do animation on YouTube anymore. And especially if you're like me and you've been trying for years... <laughs> to you know increase your subscribers make engaging content make cool stuff uh, and it's just nothing you're doing is working you kind of figure out like it's not worth the effort it's just not worth the effort you know if people aren't going to care about it another point i have on here why animators quit is it's frustrating animation is irritating it is extremely irritating, especially if you don't have good quality technology. You know, for the longest time, I was animating with a computer that had a uh, dual core processor. For those that don't know, that's like two cores in your processor. Your processor is what basically was responsible for the speed of things on your computer. You know, it was an old computer. I'd had it since 2015. And... The video software I was using at the time, if I would try to play videos at the best resolution or even at good resolution sometimes and to play them back while I was editing, it would lag. And if I ever tried to import like a GIF into my videos, which I often did because, you know, it was easier to import a green screen to GIF and then take off the green screen, then have to import every single frame. Uh, it just wouldn't play the GIF. And so I kind of had to guesstimate how a scene would look because the software that I had at the time, I mean, the, the computer I had at the time wasn't good enough for me to properly see my video, right? I have a new computer now and it's a lot faster. It's a lot easier to make stuff. And it's really opened my eyes kind of to the fact that when you're a animation creator on YouTube, right? You're an animator on YouTube. Mm -hmm. The type of tech you have really, really matters, right? And a lot of these people that are artists, they don't have money. They, they're they starting out, you know, basically broke and they're trying to do art as kind of like a, it's like a dream thing, like a passion type of thing, right? And so these are not the type of people that can just go out and buy a thousand dollar computer, $300 mic, whatever you might need to create good content. And also, right, just animating in general it is frustrating. It's tedious because you have to do everything frame by frame. And if you're like me and you never studied the principles of animation because you didn't know about them at all, right? You didn't know that 
animating required study for you to be good at it. I know it sounds dumb, but that's genuinely that's genuinely what I thought. I didn't know that you needed to study. I thought as long as you just kept doing it and practicing, you would just get better over time. So if you're like me and you didn't know that these principles existed, it can be extremely frustrating trying to make a scene look a certain way and you get to the end of the animation you're doing and it just looks completely jank. <laughs> and then you either have to start over again or you just got to release something that's jank. And, you know, it sucks because you spent all this time on it and now you either have to spend more time on it, like double the time to fix it, or you just got to release something that you know is low quality. It's probably not going to get a lot of views. Um, and the last uh, thing I have here for why animators quit is um, life issues. One of my favorite animators back when you know I was starting out, uh, Judge Pikachu. Her series Alcatraz was one of my favorite animal series on YouTube. I'm telling you, it was interesting. It was scary. Uh, it was unique. And I recently I went to check up on her channel again because I was you know finding people to unsubscribe from, and I just came across her channel and uh, I looked in her community section and I and I saw that um, you know she had kind of quit YouTube because of things that were happening in her life. And you know that's one side of the coin. Uh, something bad happens in your life, so you have to quit YouTube. But she had a lot of loving fans and supporters and things like that. Um, and I guess that's one side of the coin, right? Obviously, if there are bad things going on with you, you have to quit. But there's also, I think there's another side of it where there was another creator that I found. And if I can find the screenshot that I took of her community post, I'll put it up on the screen. But she had basically made a post saying that, kind of affirming the things I'm talking about in this video, saying that she didn't want to spend hours of her life trying to figure out how to make engaging content, trying to figure out how to get more views, more subscribers, you know, keeping up with trends, yada, 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 everything that goes along with trying to be a YouTuber, right? She wanted to spend her life doing more things and probably with, you know, more people and not the internet. And I looked at that and I said, oh my God, this is, you know exactly what I'm talking about because her saying that just kind of further proves that spending hours and hours on content and animation for YouTube is just not really worth it. You know, I, I don't think personally, right? This is my personal opinion. I can't remember how many subscribers this person has, but I don't think it was over 200,000. I personally don't believe that this person had over 200,000 subscribers and they were getting mm, over like 200,000 views on each video that they would have quit because. If you're getting that many views on each video, at a dollar per thousand views, you're making like 200 views a video, which when you split the time up between that and what you animate is still low, but you can make like really quick, uh, cute little animation videos to keep people entertained. People don't really need that complex of animation to watch a video. They just need it to be entertaining. But I don't think if she was making a ton of money from YouTube, she would have quit. You know, I could be completely wrong, but I think what she realized is that she was spending a lot of her life on social media and YouTube, and she wasn't really getting a lot out of it. And that was the problem, right? And she probably got to a point where she's like, I'm sacrificing my life and my time for what? I'm not even getting rich. Because if you were getting rich off of YouTube, then YouTube would become an avenue for you to fund all the things you want to do in your life and for you to spend more time with your family instead of like a something that sucks all of your time away because then you'd have more money to go and do more things in life so you know that's just kind of my theory on the situation that's the other side of this and why being an animator on youtube is frustrating that's how life issues can get in the way of being an animator on youtube and why some people quit you know again it comes back to that theme of it not really being worth it so with all that said, uh, I just wanted to say that there is a reason why I soft quit uh, animating on YouTube because it took too much time. I wasn't getting enough views. Uh, I wasn't really getting more subscribers. I had kind of hit a wall in my subscriber amount. I wasn't getting more people. And so I just kind of decided to stop animating so much. It was extremely frustrating with the equipment I had. Yeah, uh, I, I just didn't want to do it anymore. It was too much work. It was a whole lot of work for a whole lot of nothing. So. 
You know, if you don't see as many animations from me anymore, that is why. Uh, recently, my viewership has been going up on YouTube. That's because I've been posting very consistently. Recently, uh, you know, a lot of it's been casting calls. And then I think a few months ago or so, I posted uh, something uh, with Komain and then another thing with Akai a while back. But um, again, despite my viewership going up, my subscribers aren't really going up. Those nine subscribers, like I said, again, I know who all nine of them are. They, they did not subscribe to me because of my videos. Uh, they did not. So I hope this was a good video for you guys to kind of explain why animators quit, why I've kind of given up on it. It's just too much. And, you know, something I realize is that I'm not willing to do all of that work uh, just to not really get that many subscribers or views, you know. In my opinion, if I'm getting under a thousand views for a video, it's, it's just, it wasn't worth it. It wasn't worth it. And no subscribers, you know, it's just not worth it. So I hope this gave you some insight into why animators quit. You know, thank you guys for watching. See you guys in the next video. Sayonara, guys.